But but I want to start with the news of the day, the news of the moment. If you're just listening to Dan Beyer, you'd know that Giannis Antetokounmpo, the uh, two-time reigning MVP, signed a five-year, $228 million contract. And he did so, or announced it on Instagram. This is my home. This is my city. I'm blessed to be able to be a part of the Milwaukee Bucks for the next five years. Let's make those years count. The show goes on. Should be pointed out that I actually believe it's the next six years, unless it's a four plus one. Because if you sign a five-year extension and you still have a year left, I don't know how your math is. That's six. But nonetheless, we've heard the rumors. We've no, we know the opining. We know that the Lakers signed his brother, and they weren't even coy about it. They wanted him. Obviously, the Warriors wanted him. The Knicks would want him. Anybody would want him. He's a not-yet-in-his-prime, game-changing superstar that can play essentially every position on the floor. He has no off-the-court baggage at all. And he's gotten better seemingly every season he's been in the NBA. Outside of that, he stinks, right? Outside of the fact that he's the best player in the league um, in the regular season the past two years. He's made the Bucks into a championship contender. He's gotten better. He seems to be a likable dude who likes to pass, play defense, plays both ends of the floor, gets better, good teammate, no baggage. Outside of that, he's terrible. But here's the bigger thing and the more important thing. What an unbelievable day for the NBA. And you might say to yourself, well, that sucks. I was hoping for an entire year of drama. Pressure on the Bucks to, to win or lose Giannis. Where would he go next? It could be a daily update. All the Twitter, NBA Twitter would be amazing. But you know, Twitter is like fast food. It ain't good for you. Oh, it tastes good. I'm, I mean, you love it. I, I love it. But let's be honest. Fast food tastes tremendous. Right, like in Southern California, everybody you're either a defender of Five Guys, you're like you know, I mean, defender of In and Out, or you're like you know, Shake Shack's pretty good, or Five. By the way, Five Guys, pretty damn good. Tommy Burger, you haven't heard of if you're outside of Southern California, amazing. Fat Burger, it's not just from an Ice Cube song; it's real, it's incredible. Steak and Shake. I was in Hesperia, California this weekend. They got a steak and shake there. A little steak, burger, cheese. Oh, amazing. Do you know why they're all good? Because they're hamburgers. Right? Hamburgers, french fries, cooked in oil with bread and salt and cheese and tomatoes, occasionally lettuce and ketchup. What does ketchup have in it? Tons of sugar. Right? What what does milk, what makes shakes have in it? Cream, tons of sugar. What do fries have in it? Grease, tons of salt. I'm not telling you not to eat it, just you can't eat it all the time, right? Because fast food is delicious and it's terrible for you. Look, you can do the grilled nuggets from Chick-fil-A. Who doesn't? I do. You can avoid the French fries. Heck, you can even go protein style and do away with the bun. It helps, but it's still fast food. To make it taste better, They put a little bit more salt, a little bit more sugar, a little bit more grease, and that's what tastes really, really, really good. Right? This is baked Lay's versus regular Lay's. Regular Lay's are better or taste better. Right? Why? They're cooked in oil and they got a little more salt. Baked Lay's, kind of like cardboard. But you know what? The cardboard's better for you. And you know what the best thing for you is? Boring old broccoli. Boring old Brussels sprouts, a salad, a chicken breast, not a chicken leg. Right? It's boring. And that's what's good for the NBA. And you might, well, wait, wait, the league is drama. The, yeah, really? Okay, so had Giannis not agreed to his contract extension, the amount of pressure the Bucks were under it would be unreal, unreal. They're not on, under it already. And what happens when these stars leave these small Midwestern cities is the, the team usually really struggles. Like, look, the Bucks, the, the Pacers were good for a year 
and they'll be solid, and they're competitive, and Kevin Pritchard's done a nice job. But, I mean, even Victor Oladipo probably wants to go elsewhere. You lose Paul George, and you go, obviously, you know, Roy Hibbert went from being a tremendous center to not really useful in this NBA. But you go from Eastern Conference Finals to they made the playoffs. You know what's happened to Cleveland? Heck, Portland, same thing, right? They lost LaMarcus Aldridge. And are they competitive? Sure. But are they winning anything? Absolutely not. You basically would eliminate Milwaukee from any sort of discussion about contention. And this is a Bucks franchise that was bought, I don't know, 10 years ago. They built a, a new arena, a new basketball facility. The place is full every night. It is the crown jewel of new downtown Milwaukee. And he is the centerpiece. If the Pelicans didn't land Zion, why have an NBA team in New Orleans? They already struggle. You know, they've lost their NBA team previously. They lost Anthony Davis. I mean, look what's happened to Oklahoma City. You know, and you could say to yourself, well, they've done it to themselves. They traded James Harden. Like, well, they were trying at the time to chase the Lakers and the Spurs. They needed two big guys. and They didn't want to be above the luxury tax, tax threshold because they're not printing money in Oklahoma City. This is good for the league. It's bad for drama, bad for Twitter. It's bad for the basketball discussion shows. Where's he going to play? Who's going to get fined today saying they want Giannis to play for him? It's good for the league. Lakers will find whoever their next guy is when LeBron retires. That's what the Lakers do. They'll find somebody to do. And the Knicks will be the Knicks. And the player movement and player empowerment has been around for a long time and been building over the past decade. And LeBron has flexed his muscles and gotten everything he wanted. But the league is not as healthy as the NFL is. And I've told you this before. It's because while we may accept that they're professionals, if they want to switch jobs, they can. They shouldn't be tied to have to play for one city and one team and whatever. I, I get all of that. But I'm not the traditional sports fan, okay? The mainstream, mid-America, Midwestern, I'm going to sit down on a Friday night and watch the NBA and flip it on, and I don't know who's playing for who. Think about college basketball for a second. I want you to, I want you to think honestly. Can you name a single starter at Duke, Kentucky, or UCLA? Or even Kansas. Can you name a single starter? Why is that? Because guys are there for a year or they transfer or they go to the NBA. You don't know. And so you're simply watching because, I don't know, Kansas, Duke, and Kentucky and UCLA are always pretty good, but you can't identify a guy. The NBA is built upon these names and personalities tied to those brands. And when you shift them all around, like, why would anybody watch said team? This is a great day for the NBA. Obviously a great day for the Bucs. It has no effect on the Lakers. None. None. No effect. A, a limited effect on the Warriors. Had they been able to trade for him? But I don't think they planned for it. But this is the NBA having vegetables. It lasts longer. It's better for you. It doesn't taste as good. It doesn't smell as good. But you know what? It's good for you. It's good for you. The James Harden stuff, man, that's just fast food, bro. All right? Don't get me started on Russell Westbrook and John Wall. It's like Chinese food. 20 minutes later, you're hungry again. All right? That's what happened with that. You got two perennial all-stars, a, a former MVP. And it was interesting for, I don't know, an hour or two. And then you're like, all right, what's the next move? That's fast food. That's Chinese food. 